Mr. Gautam Dev is going to discuss energy <coughs> control of chemical engineering at IIT Kanpur as well as at other places uh, with an emphasis on the philosophy of the curriculum and uh, how the course structure of curriculum like at these places. Yes. providing 
the skills in terms of the courses one does, mm -hmm. so that one can go from one division, one branch to another with minimum effort. Should be able to be very flexible. Yes. Consequently, we should have a large number of electives. We should be able to motivate and inspire the students while doing these courses. We should be able to encourage the students to learn things of their own. And actually encourage the students also who are not doing well, or who are doing well. Because in the past, what we have noticed is that we have paid a lot of effort in terms of the students who are not doing well. What can we do in terms of improving them, in terms of helping them? But what we have noticed that we have perhaps not been giving as much of time in, to the students who have actually been doing well. So that is something also we wanted to actually make a serious effort towards. Uh, the fact that there should be something in terms of UG project and research which we wanted to talk about and be able to be uh, able to earn credits from outside. Uh, outside IIT, that they can go to another university which is there an MOU, there is a cor corresponding expertise in that other place which is not available out here. There should be a, also an ability for one to go elsewhere to uh, able to get that knowledge, be credited for that knowledge. And uh, just like there was an objective of a graduate uh, engineer uh, in, in the University of California, Santa Barbara, uh, being very critical of our system, we said that our products should be something uh, like this. For their product, they had a more detailed, a more specific outlook in terms of what the graduate should be. For us, it became a human global Indian who are leaders in, the, in their field. There were no other specifics that became a bit very dilute in terms of what actually constitutes this human global Indian that our curriculum was able to do. So this is basically the philosophy in terms of IT Kanpur. I do not know if the other IDs also have that kind of philosophy, so I will not comment about that. I will be critical about our own system, and where there are some good things, at the same time that there are shortcomings in terms of what we have been able to do. <coughs> so the overall character of, of uh, the chemical engineering education which we have is, is that uh, you can see uh, again, in terms of UCSP, is that the contents of what we are trying to pass on to the students are in terms of the fundamentals, and these fundamentals are in areas like mathematics, computing, sciences, uh, and engineering. Uh, practice chemical engineering, be able to identify, formulate, and solve chemical engineering problems. These are the fun things which we would like the fundamentals to achieve. Uh, we should be able to have the students have enough laboratory skills so that they will do design and conduct experiments based on the knowledge which they have or they are having simultaneously in terms of uh, uh, learning that particular course. They should be able to also analyze and interpret data uh, in terms of uh, the laboratory courses. In terms of the laboratory courses or in terms of design, they should be able to design a system or a component or a process and they will use modern engineering tools while doing this. So you can see, on top of that, there are other additional requirements which a department actually goes in terms of developing that particular curriculum. Unfortunately, we fall very short in terms of this. Okay, this all in terms of the details, in terms of what we want, what we require, in terms of what should be there as a chemical engineer, is not there. And uh, the chemical engineering department at IIT Kanpur has got something extremely washed out in terms of what we want. Is I did not find anywhere in our own documentation is that do we have something out there in terms of what we would like as a vision of what the product as a chemical engineer from IIT Kanpur should look like. And based on that, can we then develop a curriculum as to what it should evolve? So, Making this curriculum in terms of chemical engineering or in other engineering is not a very easy thing. It is that there are some standards, and I'll go through the standards, uh, but is that what we want, or are we just going through a process in terms of finishing off what a common uh, curriculum does contain? Okay? So the fact that we don't have something at IIT Kanpur which actually does give that elaborate, that stress 
in terms of the objects, objectives of what the student in chemical engineering should look like. Okay. Now, in the, in the program, uh, the chemical engineering programs are some of the ideas that I've taken advantage of, obviously, the internet in terms of getting this information as to what are the kind of courses a typical chemical engineering uh, graduate does. Okay. So, he does courses uh, which are common uh, to all departments and some of those courses are, are for example, are the basic science courses uh, in, in terms of physics, just like Professor Mahapatra did say and uh, very well rightly said is that uh, while doing these courses, there should be also a link in terms of how uh, one is doing what is doing and how they are related in terms of the future. Okay. Now, there are uh, advanced <coughs> courses also in science and engineering that are uh, uh, department specific. Uh, then there are obviously the program courses, which is uh, dealing with the chemical engineering specific in, or in materials engineering specific. Then there, there are uh, electives. So, if you look at the idea, you can actually look in terms of a division uh, like this, or we can alternatively look in terms of divisions in, in terms of providing basic sciences. Uh, or something about engineering sciences, <coughs> you have the departmental comprehensive courses, talk about the humanities, the electives, and, and the others, uh, which include physical education, management, and foreign language. Uh, and this is the way which uh, the, the uh, UT curriculum and ID complement in terms of looking at when we want to provide this holistic course structure curriculum to a chemical engineer, we wanted to see in terms of the confidence in these specific areas. And this is uh, what it is for a chemical engineering graduate and the different diagrams. Okay, I have uh, not done the IIC out here because the undergraduate program is not there in the IIC. So you can see out here I have listed uh, the Bombay, Delhi, Kanpur, Kharagpur, and Madras. And uh, the division in terms of the course structures uh, in the different components, the humanities and management, the basic sciences, the engineering sciences and the technical arts or the workshop, then you have the department, and then you have the electives, and, and this is the, the, the total department component in terms of taking the compulsory department and the department elective together. So you can see out here very clearly is that uh, the ranges in terms of the HSS, that is the humanities and social sciences concept, in terms of the total curriculum, the total, this is out of the 100%, okay, all of these are out of 100%, the total of these, should come out to be 100. So it ranges anywhere from 5 to 14%. Okay, we have got obviously places like Kanpur, which are uh, very uh, aggressive in terms of having the students having a lot of confidence in terms of the humanities and social sciences. And the reason being that, the justification being that, the students which we are going to create in this undergraduate program should have the ability to directly relate to the society as to what are the society, how the society is thinking, how the society is going to develop, how the society interaction with the technology, and, and so on and so forth. And that is why we have a large component in terms of humanities and social sciences. Then the basic sciences component, which we, we, we do have, is, is in terms of the physics, chemistry, life sciences, uh, and so on, uh, and the maths, it is, is about 20%. Uh, uh, and and uh, then the engineering sciences, which include <coughs> computer sciences, uh, the ESA, the electri electrical and electronic sciences. Uh, this is comes out to be about 17%. But out here you can see that the ranges uh, in terms of what they are are given the last uh, the last uh, column out, sorry, last row out here. And you can see that the departmental component in terms of all of this, the department component in all of this is ranging from 36 to 55%. Okay, in terms of the whole curriculum in which a student from the entry to the out, he has gone through the departmental courses, anywhere ranging from 36% to 55%. Okay, so I have taken uh, a situation and I have said that, okay, let's, I have done this analysis and I will say that, okay, based on this analysis, what would an optimum distribution of the different courses look like? Obviously, the structures would be different depending upon which ID you look at. Okay, but I've said that, okay, all the ideas are equal, and we are going to say that, okay, taking these ranges into account, uh, what would this whole course structure in terms of the curriculum for the department look like? And, and this is basically what you come out with, is that you have a department component which consists of 45% of the total number of courses. 
Well, not numbers is not the matter, it's the amount of contact a student has in, in, in terms of, of the lectures. Okay, that we have also defined how the contact is defined. But 45% of this contact of the student and the instructor is about 45% compared, compared to the whole uh, others. You have got a large component in terms of the basic science uh, of about 30%. You have the engineering sciences and technical arts, about 15 percent, uh, and, and you have HSS and management which comes under about 10 percent. Now in this 45 percent, we also have a component of the department to electives. So we have the core component in this as to what we must, must, must teach, and then we have a component out of this 45 percent is that can the student choose as to what he wants to learn based on the advanced knowledge he wants to acquire. So there is something in terms of the core, the base, in terms of the courses which one wants to do. And on top of that is the advanced knowledge which he wants to acquire in terms of the advanced courses in terms of electives. Okay, so uh, when you look at, at this analysis of this different IDs in terms of the chemical engineering program, you can see that there are several IDs uh, where the first year is, is invariably dedicated or devoted in terms of your science and engineering basis for future courses. So you have this component of, of, of the curriculum in terms of your physics, chemistry, life sciences, then you have your computer uh, programming, you have got a large component of the humanities courses also which is there. Uh, and, and these courses actually come to us a, a lot in terms of the first year. Then uh, you can see a few of the IITs in the first year itself have got some courses in chemical engineering. So the core courses is really not that significant in terms of the chemical engineering curriculum. You can see that there is an introduction to chemical engineering which happens in, in, in uh, three of the IITs. You can, have, you can see in process calculations uh, a course which is known to all those chemical engineers happening in Night Madras. Then you have uh, transport phenomena, uh, which is uh, initiated in the first year itself at IIT Delhi. But you can see in, in two places, IIT Kanpur and IIT Kharagpur, they do not have any course in chemical engineering in the first year. Okay, is okay that, so they. Is that more like in uh, university, like university professional? That is, yeah, that is the corresponding course which we did do away with. Well, actually, we didn't do away with that. Okay, so the fact that you can see that the courses are either one. No, in some places, either one in some places, and very few places have got two courses in terms of the chemical engineering one. Then you can see in the second year, you have actually the department two courses coming in. The number of courses and departments are coming in. Not only the courses in terms of the lectures, but also some of the uh, IITs uh, who have a lot of the laboratory component associated with them have started introducing the, the lab, the labs as well. So all of the numbers which are there is that, for example, in IIT Bombay, they have got seven courses and, and one laboratory introduced in the second uh, second year of the curriculum. Then uh, you can see Delhi, they got seven courses and two. Kanpur has got four. Kharagpur has got four courses, that is lectures, and then two labs associated with it. And Madras has seven uh, courses which are there. Specifics, obviously, I will uh, you can see out here in some of them, is that you go and see that uh, the process calculation, which has taught in several of the other IDs, uh, uh, Kanpur and Kharagpur have started picking up on it. Uh, second year, invariably, all the IITs have got the chemical engineering thermodynamics, which ha ha is, is an important component. Uh, and uh, also, in all the IITs, you have got the fluid mech or a similar uh, call perhaps a bit different in terms of transport. Uh, and also there in all the IITs. Uh, the course on chemical process technology or industries, you have uh, a, a dying course, which is there only in the three IITs, which is still there. Uh, you have also introduction of chemical reaction engineering, surprisingly, in the second year itself uh, in, in IIT Delhi. And the labs uh, are usually the labs which I mentioned out here are in terms of fluids, in terms of heat transfer, fuels, and design. And, and you can see that some of these courses perhaps are going on in parallel or have been done some extent in the previous first year itself. There is a course which is there 
uh, mechanical operations, I apologize, there should be two, uh, two, depart, uh, two IITs, uh, which is there in Madras uh, as well as Kharagpur. Uh, and this is another course which people seem to be moving away with. Yes? Delhi also. Delhi, uh, they don't have it in terms of mechanical operations. But they haven't mechanical operations. They just call it unit operations. Okay. Now I'll have to clarify that, Brad. Thank you. So uh, it, it looks like there are three uh, IITs which uh, do have this mechanical operations. Okay. Now instead of going into the details as to what uh, goes on in, in the uh, third year and the fourth year, you can see that uh, in the third year uh, you have the transport in terms of the heat transfer and mass transfer, you have reaction controls and then computer applications and a lot of labs which come in in terms of the third year. So you can see that first year you had little, second year things are picking up, third years a lot of the departmental courses are happening and the fourth year you can see that they are filled up with curricula in terms of the design, in terms of the projects, in terms of labs, in terms of a lot of electives. So in the sense that the advanced knowledge which one gets which one wants is in terms of these elective courses are usually coming in terms <laughs> of the fourth year, even though there are components in, in the third year as well, but majority of them are coming up in terms of the fourth year. And, and this is the time where people are also, some of the IITs are getting into situations of mine, developing <laughs> courses for the minors uh, as well as for honors. Uh, so I picked up two IITs. Uh, one was uh, IIT Kanpur because the data is readily available and, and uh, since I was also involved in some way of making it, is that uh, what is the percentage of departmental courses among the total course content for that particular year? And I have taken IIT Delhi because it is not very far off and the curriculum was available to me in one page. So I took a very convenient method and I said, okay, let me just analyze this too right now. I could have analyzed the rest, but time constraints did not permit me to do that. And you can see that uh, the comparison between the two is that the first year in, in IIT Kanpur, you don't have any departmental courses. In second year, you start having departmental courses. In the third year, you have a significant amount of departmental courses. In the fourth year, again, you have levels which are there in the second year. Of course, IIT Kanpur, if you remember, was a bit strange. And, and it was strange because it had the lowest percentage in terms of the departmental courses. The component of the department out here was 36%, which included the electives. In terms of the compulsory part, it was one fourth, 27%. Okay? On the other hand, if you look at a case like, like Delhi, where it was close to 50%, and you look in terms of how they were distributed, you can see that they started off from the first year pretty well. And then you can see a significant contribution over the years in terms of more in excess of 60% of the total courses a student does in IIT Delhi is basically a chemical engineering course. Okay? So what I've tried to give you in, in, in the last uh, uh, few overheads is that you can see while the development of a curriculum we have to have an objective, and I would prefer that there was an object, a, a vision, as to what we would like, in a holistic way, the institute to think about the students and their product. Coming based on that, what is the subset we would like to create in terms of a chemical engineer? As to what we would like our chemical engineer to look like? What should be his abilities? What should he, if you want disabilities? Okay? So then, if you can see that the courses that make up uh, the curriculum at most of the uh, IITs uh, are mentioned out here. Uh, process calculation, which seems to be there uh, in, in several of, of the IITs. Uh, there are some IITs which have got uh, an introduction to chemical engineering. Uh, we have taken up in IIT Kanpur a different philosophy is that we have to try to combine both. We have to try to combine the introduction to profession the importance of what a chemical engineering does, a chemical engineer does, along with the process calculation part to impart that introductory course in chemical engineering. The question that comes in is also is that chemical engineering thermodynamics or thermodynamics in general should be taught as two courses or one course. That is something which one has to actually decide while making up 
the curriculum in terms of chemical engineering. If you have heat transfer, mass transfer, and fluids, how many courses or how many lectures should we evolve in terms of imparting that kind of information? Again, I'll try to remind you out here is that even though I'm putting them as cut and dry, it is very important. It is very, and there's no uh, earth of ideas in terms of telling the student as to how these are actually connected to each other. So one level down and one level up is very important to impart when we're doing this. And there's invariably the students do not realize that what they have done and what they will do and what they are doing. The connectivity is, is uh, uh, very important in doing this. Then uh, reaction engineering. For example, uh, most of, of the IITs are do this reaction engineering in, 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 as two courses. We in, in IIT Kanpur, we say that we will do it in one course. Now, if a student is actually interested to get that advanced knowledge in, in reaction engineering, he takes that as an elective. Okay, obviously you will have to decide among your colleagues and your students as to how the end product should evolve. <coughs> Mechanical operations. Is this a dying course? Is it has to be uh, reformulated or uh, remade into a, a different kind of curriculum, incorporated into other courses, incorporated as a part of the laboratory and through the laboratory teaching that course or should it be just a standalone lecture course? That is something which one has to decide and one has to evolve. Obviously, all of these are, are, are my ideas, so you are most welcome to agree or disagree. Uh, controls, invariably people have got one course uh, on controls, uh, design, again, there is one or two courses. Uh, projects, you have got in all IITs. Uh, in IIT Kanpur, we have made a decision as to make it up to the student and the faculty whether that should be uh, what one should do or not, okay? Um, even though uh, Professor Mahapatra was talking about this uh, in the previous lecture, but this is a decision uh, which has come out of experience as to the interaction and interest of the students and the, and the instructor, is that whether it should be made an elective, whether it should be a compulsory. In IT Kanpur, we decided that it should be an elective. The elective should be based on the interaction of the student and, and the instructor. Labs, very important, but there seems to be only very few of them in some IITs. Ours included, only two. And the way they are disjointed, it, it seems that the connectivity is somehow getting lost. On the other hand, if you look at the curriculum of IIT Kharagpur, they have got several labs. And uh, it may not be as detailed uh, as, as IIT Kanpur, but there are several labs which have got direct connection in terms of the courses which they are doing. So there is a choice which one has to make as to finish the course, do the lab, or do the course and the lab simultaneously. Electives. Should one regimentize as to what one, the curriculum of chemical engineering should be, or should one give the freedom up to the students as to decide uh, that this is the basic, what we need, and beyond that, what are the electives one should know. Okay, with that, uh, uh, I, I would like to end, and I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions here. Yeah. Well, thank you for this overview. Um, there is a small difference between the number of contact hours and the number of Which one did you use today? Okay, what I did is I put up uh, uh, whichever IIT it was, for example, in IIT Madras. Uh, the total number of credits was, for example, some number, and uh, the departmental credit is basically. Right. So for each individual IT, I, I normalize it based on this. There's method. Uh, yeah, there, there. So, so, the ratio of contact hours to Generally, classroom contacts are two credits per one hour, and uh, all hands-on laboratory contacts are one to one. So, 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 so
one other instruction can be to be to one project that he records. Three other sub instructions can be to be to be to be to be to be to well, it is uh, very different, but I am talking about whatever method you take, you are normalizing based on that. Obviously, it is not perfect. And there is, and I agree with you, it is not perfect. But I have no normalized it as a percentage of, your, <coughs> of IIT Madras or IIT Bombay or whichever IIT is, the IIT Kanpur. So I have normalized it based on whatever you have taken, or the, sorry, not you, as the particular IIT has taken. Yes. Uh, you said the uh, departmental courses which are taught in IIT can't be quite less as compared to other IITs. Right. So what is that? Uh, you are teaching less number of subjects or you have less contact credits uh, for IIT subjects or it's, uh, the number of subjects taught are less for... Okay, uh, for example, uh, if, you, if you look at the curriculum of IIT Kanpur, uh, we have, for example, one course in chemical uh, process yeah, calculation. Process okay, we have one course on thermodynamics. Uh, even though we have another course of thermodynamics which we don't call a department course, that is the common course. That's too. applied thermodynamics we call it. Uh, no, that is the fundamental thermodynamics. Fundamental thermodynamics. Right. Okay, that is common to a lot common of different. Right. So that is there. Uh, chemical process industries we have shortened it. It is not a full course. There are places we have got two of them. Yeah, one in organic and one organic. We have shortened it. A reason being for that is. Like, uh, uh, it, it, it was it was multi-purpose. One was the fact that. Uh, uh, the delivery and the interest of the students was not matching. Okay, so that is why we had purposely went and shortened that part. Of it. That is the, that is the brutal truth. So now we have just only one course. Or, uh, it, it's, it's, it's actually two third of a course. Two third of a course. And why mechanical operation? Uh, you said is a taking home. Um, I, I have noticed in all of the IITs, I, our IIT included, it is not taught as a course, uh, a standalone course. It is uh, taught in terms of a part of a laboratory course. But I think in mechanical operation, all the basic operation units operations are being taught. I think the chemical engineering, those basic operations, that's what I feel. Absolutely, I agree with you, but we have to come up with a consensus. I, I, I've got, I do not disagree with you. I will agree with all the suggestions given out here. But we have to sit down and decide as to what is the most appropriate. We cannot fill up the student with all whatever we have. That will be unfair. Right? But what is the minimum requirement in terms of the student to know? So then we can give the liberty to them to decide what they can take up. So the labs are very less. Two labs are entire Right. The two standalone cars. So we, well, the way it is decided in IIT Kanpur is that for each of these, for example, in heat transfer, we have got three experiments. In fluids, we have got three experiments. Reaction, we have got three experiments. So it's this lab. It's not that it's a heat transfer. You have a one complete lab course for heat transfer. No, no, no. no, no. So it's a mix. Yes. yes. So you actually are doing all the experiments of different things. We don't have, for example, five experiments, six experiments in that lab as a standalone along with the heat transfer course. No, we don't. That, that, I, I do not know, I'm sorry, I do not know how it is in Punjab University or... I am from chemistry background, she is in... I am from actually university, so chemical engineering and technology in Punjab University. Punjab University. Yeah. yeah. So we have subject wise, uh, like data for lab, master for lab, and uh, of course we have two uh, subjects in chemical technology. Even I think that, even I think it should be shortened. Of course in uh, process calculation we have introduction to chemical engineering and then we have a... Uh, decided it should be about 15% of the whole curriculum. I think we are short on that. We don't, I don't think we have a, I, I have not done the calculations on that. But uh, I think we are. One lab has thousand contacts, 
it's a zero zero three. Sorry, it's a one zero three. One lecture. One lecture. Yeah. And that one lecture we use in terms of not only the experiment but also to discuss things which we think uh, theory goes on actually previously. So it is course than the lab. Uh, the lab, uh, the lectures are not only for the lab, but also to think, uh, try to incorporate uh, things like mechanical operations which we have missed out. Okay, so there we deliver a couple of a few lectures on that. So those kind of things uh, we have, but we also have the lab of that particular mechanical operation, for example, in in one other one lecture. So uh, what we'll do is that we will now break for lunch and university. Uh, Institute of Engineering and Technology, Kanpur University. So, very easy question. Uh, we now break for lunch, uh, and uh, about the uh, the talks which have uh, been given, we will try to give you a soft copies of things that I propose. Uh, or you can upload on the technical website. And oh yeah. Uh, otherwise, if you have, uh, you can use the internet, then we will upload everything on the. Internet and you can download. We will do both. We will upload it as well as uh, try to get the uh, CDs cut before you leave. Uh, there's a slight a small announcement uh, dinner uh, tonight. All of you are invited. Uh, 745, the venue has changed. We are not sure about the rains. The venue is now at uh, the BH dining hall. Visitors' hostel. Visitors' hostel, that's So for those of you who are staying in the visitors' hostel, that is going to be there the dining hall. For those of you who are in the extension, uh, there will be some uh, conveyance available that they will get you. And uh, uh, please be there. Let's start the second uh, session after lunch, and we have Professor Vikram Jaram. He is going to speak on graduates and materials education. Professor Vikram Jaram uh, is from the final manager of the IIC. He is also chair of the department at the moment. And he has, uh, he's a very, he has, a lot of interest in teaching and uh, pedagogy and of course he makes a difference. So, 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 so. scientists are always arguing with each other about what to teach and how to teach it. That's because there's a sense of schizophrenia about who we are. Because on the other hand, we have the uh, established scientific departments. On the other hand, we have the classical engineering departments. And materials is in a sense in between. When you're in between and you feel confident, you can say you're a bridge. When you're in, be in between and not very confident, you're afraid of falling in the water because you belong neither here nor there. Um, but I think one of the, th the roles that we must assume is that we are a bridge. We derive a lot of our uh, inputs from the basic sciences, but where we have to deliver goods is in engineering. And in the process of being a bridge, we have to avoid running to either side and we also have to establish some core skills that allow our students to project what they are to potential employers. Uh, materials people mustn't be like failed scientists or failed engineers. So, <coughs> the subject range is very wide. This is one of the results of the unification of different materials classes, materials, ceramics, polymers, and electrons. And we do need to convey information. We can't do it just on the basis of equations and principles. Um, attention spans are becoming lower. Students do not listen to you for very long. And so we need to make it interesting. 
And we do need to cultivate other engineering skills for most employers. And so I think we need to teach less in each subject. And this is always very difficult because we believe that we, everybody should learn whatever we learned when we were young. We need to unify concepts. We can't afford to teach every concept in isolation from the way it is applied in a different field within the field. And we need, to, we need to bring in practical situations right in the first place, because that's the only way to keep people's interest. I put in here that columns probably require a separate approach because if you try to over unify them, it doesn't work too well. But certainly in the inorganic materials, we need some sort of a commonality of approach. Um, I, I, I thought this was worth addressing in the beginning, namely, where do our students go? Um, if you look at where they are supposed to go, we make metallurgists okay because there are primary metal makers and people in mineral exploration. But they're not heavy employees. And even if they did offer jobs, they're not attractive to most of our students. We have the polymers and plastics, but those are really not the strengths of our metal And then we have electronic materials and thin films, which is not there in India except for isolated cases and all. So with the exception of a few multinationals here and there, yeah. Materials graduates, employability does demand a lot of collateral engineering skills if they are to succeed in the market. So you need a fairly broad education. You need to cultivate mathematical skills, design, and so on. And I think this applies in the masters as well. So now this is something that no two people will agree on. Even my colleagues sitting there probably don't agree on this. But for what it's worth, I'll, I'll put what I think is a core which is unique to our discipline. The first is a bit underrated, and that's a historical perspective. Uh, every physicist knows about Archimedes and Galileo. I mean, they, they're brought up on how physics evolved, and it's the same with the chemists. And it's the same with the engin engineers of, of the classical disciplines. But the historical background in materials comes from something bordering on the humanities. I mean, uh, blacksmiths, pottery, uh, and the way materials have been used over the ages is not part of any classical discipline, but I think it must be taught. It must be taught in some way so that people know what they're doing today uh, uh, is, is really an outcome of the way in which traditional um, skills became uh, rigorous through the influence, of course, of physicists and things. The generalized solution thermodynamics and phase transformations. This, I would say, is a, a sort of a bottom line. We didn't invent solution thermodynamics. It was done by the chemists. But I think, in a sense, we have taken it over. And the third, of course, defects and their influence on properties. And these must be taught rigorously. So just two slides to show you uh, a cross-section of materials from historical times. Uh, metals, ceramics, cement, mud, wood, which is a composite, fibers, glass, and so on. And if you look at materials today, you'll find all these glasses. You'll find metal, you'll find fibers, composites, ceramics, glasses. The applications are a little different because there's one here which is that wasn't there a thousand years ago, there's a semiconductor. So there, there is a, a, a certain amount of continuity. And I think that does need to be brought in in the early stages of uh, in material education. Now, I'd like to go back to this business of unifying. I think that's really my theme. Uh, my colleagues, I hope, will bring in some of the more detailed aspects of the curriculum and what courses are taught when and so forth. So, real concepts from different uh, subject areas. Um, let thermodynamics along with crystallography are probably the two most detested areas uh, when it comes to students. They are dry subjects. Because they are so perfect, they can be presented in a very abstract way, which uh, makes it very hard to digest. So it is important that you make it interesting. Uh, people will not listen to you otherwise. You should know this from bitter experience. Oh, they'll mug up the formula and not, not understand anything. So, and 
there are any number of examples of this whole idea of free energy, entropy, mixing, uh, if you go back through history and in the modern day. Oh, sorry, I'm not doing this not very well. Um, if you look back, our transmission was not possible until you got the oxygen out of copper. And that was not an easy job. In some of our pre preparation of alloys, the student purity aluminium. Of course, he has no need for five times purity aluminium. But the point is, it is more expensive than gold. Because removing the other three nines, beyond the 99, is you're fighting, you're fighting that. There, there are research programs being funded today for making gallium at this level of purity, because that's what you need for devices. And it can't be made from within the country. And in a more mundane way, sanitary wear, wash basins, toilet bowls, removing iron from clay because it's all mixed up in the same mess that you dig out of the ground, is essential if you're to be able to avoid uh, discoloration. And it's a practically industrial problem. And of course, more recently, we have the problem of air arts, and the Chinese deny uh, the, the world um, easy access to these very critical animals. Similarly, when it comes to talking about mixing, there's a great connection between colloidal processing in the electric industry and the issues that arise there and the classical solid state thermodynamics. And I think it's important that they are uh, taught in the same course to just to tell people that it's not different. You don't have chemists, colloidal chemists here or nanoparticle processing and uh, solid state uh, casting in or termination, uh, heat treatment on the other. The whole of electrical double layer theory, mineral processing, the stability of emulsions, bottom up assembly of nanoparticles, you know, I mean, things like osmosis and dialysis and so on, they all come from the same principles. And certainly when teaching phase equilibria, there is now no longer any justification for confining it to one class of materials. I would even include things like fractional distillation, steam distillation, certainly zone refining, mixing of oil and water, you know, just simple things like why doesn't milk boil over when you heat it in a pan in the morning every day. And these concepts can, I think, make understanding the subject a little easier because they, a lot of them come from uh, phenomena that people encounter in daily life. I mean, there were proposals for towing icebergs from uh, Greenland to Saudi Arabia as a source of water, and that, which is because they're full of pure water and there's no salt in it. It's intimately link, linked to energy conversion, and energy is big business these days. And when we teach people about different ways of converting thing, uh, you know, one form of energy into another, or heat into work. These distinctions, I think, need to be made. You can take a chemical reaction and convert it to heat and then to work, or you can go, go directly from there to work. You can take light, heat up water, and make it do work like a conventional turbine, or you have a photovoltaic which appears to do it directly. <coughs> Where the origin of dissipation really comes in 